All right, what's up guys? We got uh, episode number two of uh, Made with Quantum and uh, Christian's gonna show us what today? Uh, I'm gonna show you how to build a garage distance sensor. So this will basically let you know when you've pulled your car up close enough to the wall in your garage. Okay. Um, yeah, cool. we'll be using a client from our starter bundle and the server. And all the components that we use, all hardware components can be found in our starter kit as well. So this is just a quick 20 minute build that's fun and useful. Cool. All okay. right, let's get started. All right, so first we'll pull out the hardware from our starter kit. We're going to be using the HCS R04 distance sensor for one of the clients, and then two LEDs for the other client, one red, one green, and then five male to female jumper wires. Um, and yeah, that's all the components we'll be using from the starter kit. Um, as far as wiring is concerned, you can find all of the documentation for wiring these specific hardware components to your clients uh, on our documentation pages and confluence. Um, those can be highly useful. It gives you the parameters for, each, for the driver and it also shows you schematics and breadboard diagrams for wiring. Okay. Uh, that can be really useful. But we'll get started with the wiring first. Uh, take one of your clients and connect um, four of the male to female jumper wires to your HCS 04. And then you'll take the pin that's labeled VCC and connect it to the 5 volt port on your client. And then you'll take the port labeled ground and connect that to the port labeled ground on your client. From here we have the trigger and the echo pins remaining. Um, we're going to connect the trigger pin to the GP0 port on our client. And then the echo pin to the GP1 port on our client. Now this circuit's finished for the distance sensor. We'll move on to the two LEDs. Uh, this one's really simple. You just take uh, your red LED and you attach the long leg to GP4 and the short leg to the ground port on your client. Then with the green LED you take the long leg and connect it to GP3. And I could also add more LEDs, right, if I need to? Yeah, you could add many more LEDs. You could fill up all the ports on the client with yeah. LEDs. Or put, put it on a breadboard. Or put it on a breadboard, yeah. yeah. Okay, but you decided to go with like those two LEDs for this project, right? Yeah, just because it's really simple and it keeps a small form factor. Okay. Uh, then you'll connect the anode leg of the LED to, or excuse me, the cathode leg of the LED to the ground. Okay, right, cool. Sweet, so those two circuits are complete. We'll, we'll move on to building the firmware and uploading it to both of the clients. So. Right now you're gonna to wanna to power on both of them. Did you already pair the clients or? No, we'll, we'll have to go through the pairing process, but that's okay. quick and easy. So navigate to the client's uh, panel on your server and go, the two clients should appear in your unpaired list if you haven't already paired them. You'll pair, select pair for both of them under the actions um, option menu. Alright, now, once both are paired, select identify on one of them, and once you identify the client, the LEDs will blink in red and green. Um, and so, I know that this client is now paired to the LED, is the client that has the LEDs. So I'll go to edit, I'll name this one LEDs. And then I now know that the remaining client is the one that's connected to my distance sensor. So I'll edit this and name this one distance sensor. Uh, renaming your clients isn't necessary, but it makes it easier in projects to know which one's which. So now we'll navigate to the firmware page. We'll hit create new. We'll first build the distance sensor firmware. Um, we've got to add hardware. We'll add a distance ultrasonic sister, uh, ultrasonic sensor. Mm -hmm. Name it distance. Could I also put the distance sensor and the LEDs on one client? Yeah, you could if you, you wanted to. Okay. Uh, the reason why I put it on two is just so it's easier to organize on the wall. Okay. 
Um, so for the distance of Sonics, like the HCS R04 driver, and then assign your echo pins in our case, the trigger is connected to GP1, and the, or GP0, excuse me, and the echo pin is connected to GP1. Yep. So now we'll save that. Uh, our resolution for the driver is one, and our re resolution is set to inches, because we're using Imperial, but if you're on metric, it'll be in centimeters, and you can change change that up. So there's the settings? Yeah, you, you would change that in your the settings. Um, okay, so I settings. can go Imperial or, or, or metric. Or yeah. metric, nice. Exactly. Okay, so now that firmware is done, we can upload it to our distance sensor client. We'll start the, generating the code, and the client should, we'll go into OTA. And then the LED turns off as well, right? Yeah. So, there you go, you can see that just happened. Now, while this is uploading, we'll create the second set of firmware. Name this one LEDs. Add a hardware, we're gonna add two LEDs. So we'll name one of the LEDs red, and then we'll add the second LED. Notice I don't have to go back and search for the LED again. And so the type is already listed there. It makes it easy for adding multiples of the same hardware type. So now for red, we'll go to the driver. We'll select GPIO. The pin, it is GP4. And the mode, we'll set to initially low. Now for the green LED, we'll do the same. We'll select GPIO. However, for the pin, we'll select GP3 this time, and the mode will be initially low. Now, that's it for this firmware file, so we'll go ahead and save it, and then we'll upload it to the client that we named LEDs. So you can see over here in the notifications bar, the upload status on your firmware. Okay, so it's simultaneously uploading the firmware right now? Yep. Okay, so I can do m multiple like clients at the same time. Yeah, right? multiple clients. Okay, cool. That can be useful. It's much more efficient that way. Right. So now, while those are uploading, we'll go and we'll build the application. Here, we'll go create new. I'm gonna name this Garage Sensor. Now, in the hardware panel, we're gonna add a, a distance ultrasonic sensor. We're just gonna name this one Distance. Um, name it in the properties panel. Always make sure to save your properties, otherwise they won't be saved. Um, from the distance block, we're going to go into, we're going to add a code object, and this is going to be value compare. Um, and we're going to drag the distance port to value one, and we're going to set the value one port to trigger the properties panel. And then for value two, we're going to set the default value to 20. Now that reflects 20 inches. Okay. Um, and I could, I could, I change this like to a later point. Yeah, of course. When okay. calibr after everything's done and you want to calibrate it, you realize you want it to be closer or farther away. You can always right. come back to the application and change the value in the value two port. Okay. Um, so yeah, so that's that. We'll name this code object value. And now from here, we're going to drag in two LED objects. And those are the two LEDs on the other client. Yeah, those will correspond to the two LEDs on the LED client. Okay, but I could also add like multiple more if I want like more LEDs to go on or? Yeah, as yeah. many LEDs as you're using in your project, you can add to the canvas. Okay. And that will all be reflected in the mapping. That's how you'll get one or the other LED to trigger. Okay. So I'll name this first LED green, to correspond to the green LED. I'll name the second one red. And now once the distance from the car to the sensor is less than 20 inches, the value we put in two. We want the green LED to illuminate to signal that you're close enough to your wall. Okay, and that means like I can stop now and my car is in a, in a interval where when I will park it there, it won't hit the, the, the garage door. Like, yeah, when, when the garage door closes. Exactly. Okay, so I would, I would just adjust that value based on like the length of your car. measurements my garage has. Exactly. Okay. And so then now if it's greater, than 20 inches, we're gonna have that set to red. That reflects that your your car isn't close enough to the wall. Okay, and I still have to approach it. Exactly. Okay. Um, and so that that's the basis for our application. Now we can run it, we'll map it, and then we'll run it. So in order to map it, you just press the play button on your applications page for the application that you wanna run. We'll map the green LED 
to the green LED on the client and the red LED object to the red LED on the client. The distance sensor to the distance sensor on the other client. All right, so now that we've run it, it sh there's nothing in front of the sensor now, so it should be giving us a red LED. And when something passes um, 20 inches or less in front of the sensor, it should go green. You can see it's cycling between the two. See that once it gets past 20 inches, it goes to red. Okay, cool. So I think we can take this outside now, huh? Yeah, so now we can set it up on our wall or garage and now uh, you can watch it in action. Okay, see you outside then. All right, so we're outside now. So Christian, how did you set it up? All right, so we moved the server and clients from inside to outside and set it up on the side of our workshop here. Normally you'd want to do this inside of a garage, but we don't have access to a garage at the moment, so we kind of just jerry rigged it to the side of the wall. Anyways, we Velcroed the client to the wall and we added a nine volt, to five volt converter that powers the clients. Um, we did that to both of them. And this is a very jerry-rigged setup. Ultimately, uh, we'll come out with some designs for cases for these so that you can have them more permanently affixed in your home. But let's see it in action with the car. Okay, so the light is red right now. And uh, we got our car here, so let's try it. Turn green. Let's go outside and check it. And the light is green. And as you can see, no space. Yeah. It's a simple, fun, useful build. And you can build a plethora of other projects like this with a quantum system. Alright, thanks Christian. And we we'll see you in the next episode. See you later guys.